Hey, um, hi guys. All right, uh, so I'm back out here at the property this weekend. Uh, goal is to go ahead and get some trees cut down, clearing made so I can start working on getting a platform out here. Uh, summer's happening soon, so we wanna go ahead and bring the family out, right? Um, so first thing that I have to do is go ahead and get my hammock set up so I have a place to sleep tonight. And then uh, go ahead and figure out how I'm gonna cut into the woods to start figuring out where I want to cut down on the on on the uh, to make that clearing right um, yeah so let's get to it so of course I've camped in a hammock before right but it was without a mosquito net and it had adjustable straps on it so this one here took me a long time to figure out how to do it because the instructions for it were pretty bad and because I know you don't want to watch me set up a tent or a hammock for the next hour, I went ahead and I sped this up for your viewing pleasure. Now at this point, I realized it was already 6 o'clock. There was no point in trying to clear up land. Besides, I needed to make sure I have sunlight and everything to make dinner. Um, so it was dinner time. And what you'll see here is just very simple breast tenderloins today. Uh, cooked over the open fire with some potatoes. And using some movie magic we get to the finished product, which was just as delicious as what it looks like here. Okay, so let's talk here. Um, as mentioned, this is my first time doing anything like this. Uh, so there was a bit of research that I had to do to try and figure out what I needed and how to do this safely. Um, number one rule usually is don't do this by yourself. Um, unfortunately, that's just not possible. My shift is during the week, so I don't really have friends that can come out and help me. Um, Amy has to work and the girls go to school, so I, I kind of have to just be out here by myself. But I f I'm hoping as long as I follow um, all the safety rules, as long as I go slow and I don't do something that I shouldn't, I will be okay. Um, so let me go ahead and go over all the gear that I brought to keep myself safe and get back home to my family. This uh, wind today is a little crazy, sorry for the noise. Okay, so first, I got my chainsaw, this is a Husky 435, um, 16 inch blade, nothing special about it, but I did get a good chainsaw, it works, it runs, it cuts well, I cut down a couple, or uh, I chopped, cut down up the trees in my backyard with that one. I um, got a couple felling wedges, just in case I do need to uh, get a little bit extra, um, hopefully that won't be necessary, everything here is pretty straight, not very thick. I got chainsaw gloves. If you are new to this and trying to learn from me for some silly reason, um, these have a protective mesh on the back. If the chainsaw hits it, it'll fill up with that fiberglass type material and stop the chainsaw. Um, that's to prevent your hand from getting cut off. Uh, generally speaking, you really only need it on the left hand because the right hand will always be on the trigger if you're right-handed. So the only glove that has it is the left hand. I got a contractor helmet, safety helmet. I wanted one with lip on it, um, just to, in case I do have a branch or something coming down, it'll, it'll um, deflect off here. Obviously, these helmets aren't gonna protect you from a big, um, big heavy branch or limb, but smaller ones kill you too and this will protect you from those. I got a face shield here. Uh, it's a mesh face shield. Um, I'm hoping that with the humidity and the weather out here, since this won't fog up as much, it'll do me better than the safety glasses that I've brought. Speaking of which, I do have safety glasses as well. This one here is a DeWalt fully enclosed one. It's supposed to be anti-fog. It's not. Um, it doesn't fog up, what it does instead it gets really wet on the inside. I'm actually not a fan of that. And I brought regular over the glasses type 
safety glasses I use in the wood shop. Hopefully, I might wear these instead. Uh, last but not least, all right. Last but not least, I do have some safety chaps, chainsaw chaps. Um, again, very similar to how the gloves work. The chainsaw touches these. And when it cuts in, it's full of this fibrous material that will clog up your chainsaw and pretty much stop it immediately. Um, so these will definitely be worn the whole time. And then one final safety thing that we always, that I always bring when I come out here, it's a Zolio GPS device. Uh, I am not sponsored by these guys. Um, the only reason that I even got these is because they are cheaper than a regular satellite device. This device is strictly used for messaging through satellite. Um, it has an SOS button on it, so if I hit that button, they will find me via GPS, even if I don't respond to their messages. The service is like 20 bucks a month. I only get 20 messages a month, which is fine to at least check in with the family, let them know that I'm alive. Um, we don't have any cell phone signal out here, so this was this was an important investment for us Okay, that's pretty much takes care of safety stuff. I do have a axe sharpener You guys can go at me come at me, whatever. I just want simplicity That'll sharpen my knives and my axes and it does a decent job I'm not gonna go crazy trying to use grinders and stones and all of that funny stuff you're also gonna make fun of me for this axe because it's not a wooden, fancy $300 axe. It's a very simple axe. All I will be needing it is possibly knock in the wedges, maybe split some wood later, but overall, it's just a simple axe to get the job done. And then of course I got my camera gear with me too, as I wanna record and show, guys, show you guys off some stuff. Got plenty of fuel, got chain bar oil, I don't care about the brand, to be honest with you, it's just what they had at Lowe's when I bought the chainsaw. And I got pre-mixed fuel for the chainsaw as well. To say I'm not nervous would be an un or to say I'm nervous would be an understatement. <laughs> Again, first time doing this, first time clearing this stuff off. I don't have very uh, thick trees. They're only about 12 to maybe 14 inches in diameter, but they are tall trees. Um, and just a lot of brush. So I am nervous, but I'm prepared. I'll take it slow. I'll make sure to look overhead to make sure there's no branches that might fall down and kind of see where things go from there. Okay, so I don't want to get yelled at by you guys for forgetting some stuff. So I do want to go ahead and make sure you know that I do have hearing protection with me as well. I probably should have gotten earplugs or brought earplugs with me. I didn't think about it. Um, hopefully this will work underneath the helmet. And then finally, I thought it would be good to show you guys my first aid kit that I'll be carrying on my belt. Or at least with me. So we're out in the middle of nowhere. Um, the things I have to consider is quick fix for catastrophic injury, right? So, all right. So these are the only things I really have, and reason being, again, I don't want to bring a full-on first aid kit when I know that out here I just need to worry about it being quick and fast and then get going somewhere. I have a couple of pads for wound dressing. So if I, if I do get myself cut really bad, I can wrap myself up. Um, same with this quick clot. I can go ahead and cut up or I can clot up the, uh, the wound and get going. Um, I always carry Pepto with me. Honestly, I'm not the healthiest person in the world when it comes to eating. Uh, Pepto just helps with uh, stomach aches and so forth from the junk that I eat. 
yeah, I did get some regular band-aids as well. Um, hell, who knows, I've had branches cut me open out here and some small alcohol swabs just to be able to clear those small wounds out. In case something happens, I do have ibuprofen as well, just for like headaches or uh, minor pains and aches. Um, again, don't look at the brands too much. I do go generic with most of my stuff, just because most generics are fine anyways. And I also got these little towelettes. I put those in here on purpose, be able to clean, clean up anything that I might have and uh, get it sterile. So very straightforward. Um, the one thing that some of you guys have may never seen before is this tourniquet right here. First of all, I bought it in bright orange for a reason, that way it's visible. Secondly, what a tourniquet does is it goes around a limb and then you can tighten it up using this little, it goes around the limb and you can tighten it up using this little stick right here. That will that will slow down the bleeding tremendously so if for any reason I cut a finger or a leg off um, I can tie my arm my leg whatever off and be good to go. Ah my stuff's flying away. I just used this maybe two weeks ago, so I don't have to worry about winterizing it or any of that stuff. Theoretically, it should be perfectly fine. The one thing I could kick my head about, though, is I forgot to bring that stupid tool with me. So hopefully I won't have to open this guy up or else I need to take a quick run to Lowe's. Which, quick run to Lowe's here means about an hour away. As you just saw, saw is filled up and it works. So, I guess next step is gonna be trying to figure out where in the heck we're gonna go ahead and build this tent platform. So we're planning on having essentially three quote unquote campsites here, all for the family to use, or maybe some friends if they come over. Um, we're gonna start off with a tent platform that's gonna be roughly 14 by about 20. Um, reason being, or the, the tent platform will be there for us to be able to set up our uh, white duck cotton uh, bell tent. Awesome tent, huge, great for us as a family to use for the monthly visits out here. Plus it gives us a base camp for us to come out and actually work on stuff, right? Then we do want to have a, our main cabin, our main home out here, or our main home away from home, I guess. Um, which is gonna be, we haven't quite figured that out yet. That's, that's in the planning stages. At minimum 20 by 20 with another six foot uh, patio attached. But again, that, that's in the planning stages for later. And then Amy would love to go ahead and build herself up a um, A-frame she shed out here. Um, I'll link to the YouTube down below as to the, the girl that she keeps following or the woman that she keeps following. No, you know what, she doesn't follow. I found her and um, she built this whole cabin up herself. It's really cool, one of the walls just goes up on its own and Amy loves it and she wants to do that as well. So um, there will be that plus the main cabin plus 
a tent platform to hang out with. Um, just be able to come out here and just enjoy our weekend away. Yeah. Um, one thing I've already found out while I've been out here, the couple of times I've come out, the water, the groundwater levels, obviously is gonna be uh, tied in with the creek. The thing is, I came in yesterday and my toolbox flo floated away. The chairs were set in a different way. Um, I knew that might be a possibility, so I'm not upset about it, but it's something to kind of keep in mind that we probably won't have a permanent spot down here by the creek. It's gonna be more of bring the stuff down that we want to use if it's dry or else we need to go up further back into the woods. So, anyways, that's me rambling. There's a lot to do, a lot to figure out. Um, I'll set up the camera for you guys to Actually, I'll probably end up using my cell phone. It'll be a little shaky, but that way you guys can kind of see where I'm taking myself to and what I'll be doing. All right, thanks. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and just go up this path here, see what I can find. Just so you know, I am covered in deed on all my um, skin exposed areas and then I'm using a um, pesticide that really goes on your clothing. I don't even want to know if I want to call it pesticide but it's a deep type product that goes on your clothing to kind of protect the ticks and stuff from coming up. So I am I am kind of protecting myself there. Um, you'll see me do a lot of knocking and stuff as I'm going up in there just because the one warning I got was that we do have a lot of snakes and stuff up here. So. I'll be doing a lot of listening, a lot of knocking, just trying to warn them that I'm coming, as well as hearing for rattlesnakes in case there's any around. Okay, I cut up to what looks like a uh, water trail of sorts, or what a runoff. Um, it might be a game trail, but I truly doubt it. But I'll go ahead and take you guys up there and then keep going. Now, in case you guys are concerned about it, I don't know what kind of people are watching this channel in decades down the line. Do know, um, we're not just cutting down these trees and deforesting this whole thing. Uh, just enough to be able to get us a path to where we want to set up. And then from there we also want to, uh, we'll be planting different types of trees as well around our area, just to give us um, some fruits and stuff as well. And then of course we want to have some like veggies and things also. We don't know if we want to truly live off grid, but we do want to, uh, we want to have the ability to. So. You can see here, back there is a the water runoff. It never has water in it, but obviously water must be running down from in there because we do have the uh, path coming all the way down. So, don't want to go over here, which I thought would be kind of cool. We'll instead go up a bit further into it. Um, platform, probably end up having to build just a little higher, just to kind of 
avoid any water runoff that might happen. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and keep going. Until we get used to this place, I want to be able for us to recognize the path in here as well. So I'm just going to put up these orange reflective fans on the trees up this way. Just to, I don't know, kind of help me next time I come out to know where I want it to go. We're not super far deep or anything into the woods, but let's be honest. Everything looks the same once you take a step in. Time to go ahead and get dressed. Let's get the chaps on. Oh, how do I look? Unfortunately, hearing protection doesn't work underneath this helmet. I'll have to go ahead and just get me some earplugs next time I come out. So, initial step for me is going to be clearing out a bunch of the small stuff first so I can build myself an escape route for when I start chopping down the, the big trees. First tree I'm knocking down, plan on knocking it down that way, notch here, line here, escape route down that way. Actually, yeah.
Oh man, you can hear me breathing. This is a lot of work. Already taking three hours of break today. I'm just, the city boy ain't used to doing this stuff, man. <laughs> uh, you can see though, I got a lot done. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rest of this brush out of here. The trees that I knocked down, move them out and see what else I still need to do. But in all fairness, I think as long as I pull that stuff out, I can probably set up a little fire here and just kind of get some of the brush burned off as well. But, man, I need to make sure I get a tape measure up here, measure it out, make sure it's big enough for what we want to do. I might need to cut down a few more things also. But, God. Progress, right? <laughs> kind of progress on where we're at now. I'm glad that this progress exists. Sorry for all the heavy breathing. I, uh, I'll spend today getting everything else cleaned up and then kind of burn some of it off just to kind of give us a little bit of space and get rid of some of that brush that's in here but this will give us a good amount of space for us to set up set at that platform Two goals for today and then I want to go home. I want to go ahead and get this mess here cut down and all the branches cleaned up onto our shrub pile and I also want to go ahead and get rid of, you can't see those, but I want to get rid of those, that cluster of four that's over there as well. Right here. Get rid of those cut up a couple of branches and get all the big logs taken over to the log pile and then I think I want to go ahead and head home so
All right, well, change of plans. Saw won't stay running. Uh, it won't idle, that's the problem. It'll run if I have to throttle open, but it won't, it won't idle. And that's A, not safe, B, huge nuisance. So, I'm gonna take that as a sign of me going home. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything packed up and head out. Um, yeah, there's not much else I can do. If I had another day, I'd go ahead and start burning some of this stuff. But I don't want to burn it and be stuck here for however long it takes for that stuff to die down. So, they'll give us something to do next time. Taking those things down will take an hour. Tops. So, it'll be fine. I got a lot accomplished this weekend. I'm going to go ahead and head on home. Yeah, I felt a little defeated there at the end. Um, I'm just used to being able to look up everything on the internet. And I just didn't have it while I was out there. So, I went home. And I'll tackle it again next month. Make sure you subscribe to see that. If you found value in this video, please go ahead and subscribe to us. Um, hit that notification bell to see when the next video comes up. And I'll see you guys in the next video.